guys, Neri here from Drake Wing Gaming. So if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with another Let's Play episode of Dawn Chorus. Now, the last time we left off, we were stargazing with the, some of our friends, some of our new acquaintances, uh, the two of the professors. So, well, one professor and one coach. So, without further ado, let's jump right back into that, shall we? So, a little timer. Okay. I don't know how close we are to the next. Uh, probably pretty close to the next. I uh, just uh, not sure how things are going to end up. In the evening. <clears throat> Only, unlike in the city, the sky here is filled with a multitude of stars. How am I supposed to find anything among so many? Counterintuitively, you may find out that locating specific stars is harder here because of how many stars are visible. Focus on the brightest ones and ignore all the small ones. I think I see it. Looking only for the brighter stars, I finally locate the familiar shape and raise my paw. Now, why is this important at all? A constellation is the third biggest one in the night sky, and certainly one of the most well known. It is extremely useful in navigation in the northern hemisphere of our planet. Even Homer in Odyssey mentions Ursa Major as a constellation that never disappears from the sky and instead bathes in the ocean's waves. If we draw a line going through them, the last two stars of the bowl point us straight to Polaris. Who can tell me why is that so important? Hmm, Polaris is the North Star. It's roughly above the North Pole, and so it's the point around which the whole sky rotates. That's right. Thank you, Jorgen. What you might not know is that Polaris is actually a three-star system, composed of a primary star with two smaller companions. But that's a story for a different lesson. If anyone here is interested in night sky photography but doesn't have the money for expensive equipment, then you could take some nice photos knowing where Polaris is. With long exposures, you can get those beautiful star trails circling around the North Star. I like this guy already. It's a shame I don't have classes with him. Our physics professor is probably the grumpiest old man I've ever seen. He's really nice, but any jokes about Uranus gets, gets you thrown out of his class. Lake knows something about that. Ow, Lake. I always thought you were a polite boy that never gets into trouble. I don't know where you got that idea. I can attest that it's completely untrue. So, it looks like everyone was able to locate the Ursa Major. That's great. For the next exercise, let's spice things up a little bit. This time, you will be using telescopes. You will take a closer look at Saturn through them. That is, if you manage to locate it. It will make it easy for you, though, because there are supposed to be, these are supposed to be fun activities, after all. You were instructed to download a sky map app to your phones before the arrival. I hope you all did that. Oh, damn. If not, then do that quickly before we get to the next step. Devin, you can go too. Have some fun as well. Oh, if I can, sure thing. Okay, so we don't quite have enough telescopes for all of you, so for the purpose of this exercise, you may form pairs or triples or whatever configurations you might fancy. I don't mind. So now, please, step up to the telescopes. I believe you can sort into bigger groups when needed yourself. Doing as Professor Arn said, I walk up to a free telescope at the end of the terrace. Looking around, I see that all my friends are already either at their telescopes or paired up with someone else. Even Miko is walking towards one alongside Bjorn. Okay, does everyone in every group have their own telescope? Good. So now we can start. Named after the Roman god of time, Saturn is a good object for observation for beginners. It's relatively easy to locate and, I might say, fairly spectacular because of its rings. From my own observations, I can tell you that my students prefer to look at planets than stars. We have a bit of a closer relation with them, after all. You can't help but start to imagine what it might look like from even closer. Who knows, maybe one of you will find some alien structures on one of the planets one day. But for now, for an object with a golden color, shining steadily, just a tad bigger than the other ones around it. 
First, you will need to locate it with your own eyes before finding it through a telescope. The mobile map you have on your phones will be very helpful. An object with a golden color, shining steadily just a tad bigger than the other ones around it. Hmm. Easy to say. Hard to find. I start, up, I, stare, I start up the sky map, hoping that it will help. I have absolutely no idea how to use it. Maybe I should have read a manual or something before the lesson. I look around in desperation. Maybe I'd be better off joining someone else after all. Also, it's already the end of the day, and I still haven't asked anyone about sharing the room for tonight. Ah, oh, damn. Okay, so this is where we get some good old boys. I think it's finally time to make that decision, and this might be the best moment for that. So who am I going to ask? Ooh, we got a lot of boys. Oof. I feel like a kid in a damn candy shop here. I'm gonna go with Lake for this run. Lake is studying astrophysics, so he will surely know how to use it. I look around for him, and there he is, standing just one group away from me. Weird. Standing there alone. I was sure he'd be with Jorgen. He's looking through the telescope as I walk over to him, so I tap him on his shoulder to get his attention. Hey, uh, Lake? He turns in my direction, looking at me with surprise. Oh, Carvin! What's up? How are you doing with the assignment? Wait. Wait, you wouldn't be here if it was going well, right? Well, yeah, you're right. I opened up the Sky Map app, but I have no idea how to use it. I know I could have asked Professor Arn, but I saw you standing here alone and thought I would join. Aw, that's so nice of you. Jorgen wanted to do everything himself, so he went ahead and started the assignment himself. And I was happy to do this myself, too. This is a lot of fun. That makes sense. And how are you doing with it? Oh, I'm done already. If you want, you can just take a look through the telescope. But if you want, I can go and help you with your own. Nah, it's fine. You can tell me how you did that, but I mostly wanted to see Saturn myself. Rather unlikely that I will ever be using a telescope again in my life. It was all very easy, actually. Lake takes out his phone and opens the app, showing me the screen. Look, all you have to do is click through the menu on the right and find Saturn on this list. Now, it shows you an arrow pointing, at it on, pointing to it on the map. What you see on the screen is the part of the sky you're pointing the phone at. You rotate the phone until you can see it on the screen, and that's all. It's useful even if you don't have a telescope and just want to look at the stars. I nod along. It does sound easy indeed, and now I feel stupid for not even trying it before asking for help. But, at least now, I have a good occasion to ask Lake. After that, finding Saturn is easy. You look through the finder and move the telescope until it's exactly in the middle, and that's pretty much it. You can use the knobs on the side of the tripod for some fine adjustments. Okay, that sounds easy enough. So, everything is done and I can just look through the telescope, right? Yeah, go ahead. Ooh, that's pretty. I lean in and look into the telescope. In the middle of the image, there's a brush-colored orb with a ring around it. I was expecting that it looked like a flat image, but it's very real and three-dimensional. The planet casts a shadow on one side of the rings, and there's a thin shadow of the ring on the planet itself, too. It's not too big, but I see it very clearly. Okay, that was something. Oh yeah, I see you liked that. Quite, yeah. I wasn't really sure what others found so interesting about stargazing, but seeing the planet up close? Man, it's so much different than looking at photos. Mm-hmm, I get you. It's indescribable, really. I gaze up at the sky, looking at all the blinking stars and planets. They feel much closer now, but also much more alien, alive with their pulsating light. They're no longer just some shining dots in the familiar night sky. Now, they're stars and planets with their moons, and even distant galaxies. And there are so many of them. Lake is looking at the night sky, too. The stars are reflected in his bright eyes, and I don't think I've ever seen him looking so wistful. The sky in the city is nowhere this nice. Is that what you got in- is that why you got into astrophysics? Hmm. Oh, in a way, yeah. I've liked watching the stars since I was little. Just go a bit further from the town and stare at the sky above me. 
I loved going out in the night to a lake that was not far from my house and sitting there on the coast. The stars reflected in the water's surface seemed to ripple and shimmer so nicely. I didn't really have an idea for what I wanted to, to do after I finished high school, but my physics teacher convinced me to go to university. Apparently being an astrophysicist is a good way to travel a lot, and that's one thing I was sure about. I wanted to travel and see the world. You know how it is. After spending your whole childhood in a small town, you just want to move somewhere where anything is happening. Well, maybe not everyone. A lot of my friends stayed behind. But you moved out as well. Yeah, I did. Maybe I don't share your wanderlust, but I dream of being more of the. I dream of seeing. But I dreamt of seeing more of the world since I was old enough to know that there's something beyond the town I live in. Wanderlust. A strong desire to travel for the traveling itself. Basically, what you describe. Ah, sorry, I don't think I've ever heard that word before. He smiles meekly and turns towards the telescope. He's so easy to fluster sometimes. How are you two doing? Do you need any help? We're fine, thank you, Professor. That's good to hear, Lake. I see you're helping your friend. That's nice of you. What's your name? I don't believe I've seen you in my class. I'm Carvin, Professor. Good to have you here, Carvin. I hope you're enjoying the lesson. If you will have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. Professor Arn smiles and walks away to the next group, leaving me alone with Lake. Okay, so we're done with this. Do you want to find something else to look at? Well, there's something I wanted to ask you about, Lake. He cocks his head to the side, his face turning serious all of a sudden. Y yes? I gulp loudly. Okay, better to get it over with. I don't yet have a room to sleep in tonight. Would you be okay with sharing a room with me? Oh! That would be awesome, Carvin! Too bad they didn't have any rooms for three people. Then we could have just taken one from the beginning. So, yeah, sure. We have only two beds, but we'll think of something. Phew. That was more that was more stressful than I thought it would be. And I'm going to save it right there. <laughs> oh, that was a cute that was a cute little episode. Oh, we've picked our boy for the run. We're gonna focus on this cutie. But anyway, guys, that was another episode of Dawn Course. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the notification bell until the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!